Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! This is one of the craziest FaceTimes I had, so I thought of posting here for all to enjoy. I currently have a friend in NY. I have never been there, so every time we talk, we FaceTime on Facebook Messenger or Skype, so he can show me around the city where he is and so on. So that's how I saw the craziest thing happening in a Chinese food restaurant. We were talking while he was having his dinner and I was able to see the counter behind him where all the craziness ensued. I noticed people asking for their food only by numbers like I would, like a number 5 please, then doing the number with their fingers and so on. There weren't too many people, just one customer sitting near the counter looking at his phone and seems other three ladies they went and sat by the other side where I can see them. Then this dude went to speak to the worker with what I thought was a big red folder, probably the menu in hand. To describe this guy I think he was tall. Employee looked small in comparison, kind of on the fat side. He looked like he had not taken a shower in days. The entitled dude says, Excuse me. The worker answers, Yes. Why are all the prices so high? Have they changed? Sorry, very little English. He said that while doing a polite bow. The hell? My friend whispers to me, Are you listening to that? Yep. Five bucks says he goes nuts. I tell him. <laughs> yes. Shh, be quiet. I mute my mic. I said why prices so high. Sorry, price and menu pointing to the folder in the entitled dude hands. Sorry. Listen to me, you dumb slur. Why prices are so high. Sorry, prices and menu. Very sorry. Very little English. A customer adds, dude, he doesn't understand you. And I don't think he can change prices. He's just an employee. Shut up. Who asked you? The customer turns around shaking his head. Just leave him alone, dude. If the price is too high, go somewhere else. Mind your own. This is America, you dumb morselers. Speak English. Then he proceeds to hit the worker with a menu. The worker just raises his hands to cover his head, while this crazy dude keeps hitting him with a menu. The other customer tells him, Whoa, dude, what are you doing? Are you crazy? I said shut up. And then he throws a menu to the client. Did not hit the guy though. I can hear the voice of a woman in the back saying, I call the police. Shut the hell up, dumb witch. Call ICE instead. What is your problem? My problem? These damn people come here and abuse us. This is my problem. And dumb people like you defend them? Then he made a gesture like he's going to punch the guy in the face. You're crazy. If you dare to hit me, I'll beat you, I warn you. Ha! Huh, like I care. Don't think you can. I know how to fight. Then he tries to punch the customer, but the other guy dodges. Now this guy is really heavy, so he stumbles and goes down like a potato sack. The customer starts to laugh at him. And while the employee just stands there looking at the entitled dude, I can no longer see him because he fell down out of the view of the camera, but I can still hear him. What are you looking at? Then I see a chair. One of the folding chairs fly over the head of the worker, but it does hit him because I see him come up behind the counter and he is now bleeding from the head. The moment he threw the chair, the police were arriving and they saw him. Stop. Calm down. Put your hands where I can see them. The police shouts. No, I'm just defending myself. The police taking the taser out now. I'm not asking again, sir. You have no right. And he walks towards the cop. The entitled dude gets dazed, drops to the floor, screaming in high-pitched voice, Ah, you slurs, I'll sue you. And more swearing aimed at the cop. Sir, you were warned. Please do not try to get up. Do you understand? The entitled dude muffled crying sounds. Yes, but you'll hear from my lawyer. Ah, that's fine, sir. Just stay there. I can hear the cops calling for an ambulance. The poor employee seems that he seriously cannot speak English, so they start interviewing everyone else. 
I see more cops enter and cut the entitled dude who is now just moaning on the floor helping him to get up. It seems there is one asking for the manager but it looks like the worker is alone with only some other two guys in the kitchen. I hear someone saying it seems there are cameras here. We have to contact the owner then. I also hear a voice say to my friend, Hey, what are you doing? Did you record what happened? He said, No, sorry. I'm just on FaceTime. Then I heard the voice of one of the cops asking him to hang up please and give a statement. He said, OK, officer. I heard one of the cops say, Sir, you are getting arrested and charged with assault. Then he started to read his rights. And after that, my friend hung up. What a roller coaster. Hi, this happened yesterday. I, 30-something male, never will reveal my age, I had a hard time at work and just left the gym with my roommate. As most of you know, going to the gym usually makes you hungry as heck. So I was already slightly cranky. We live in an apartment building in a city on a major street. Our building has two driveways, one in and one out. The clickers to open the garage will only open the indoors. And there is a button to open the outdoors inside the garage. So as we are about to pull up to the turn to get to the driveway, we see a huge black SUV plucking everything. Seeing this, I was definitely ticked because I was hungry and tired. Since I didn't know whose car that was, I called my landlord inside if anyone had a car like that in the building. However, the landlord told me the person was chased off earlier for plucking the driveway. The landlord tried to have him towed but technically, since he was on public street, the towing companies wouldn't touch it. Still wondering why but whatever. They called the police earlier but the person disappeared before the police got there. So I asked if I could call the non-emergency number to get the police to tow it away. And he said, be my guest. So I'm halfway through dialing the number when it clicked. But they said this was the second time today that this guy has done this. That's when I think the hangar becomes pity. I picked up my car and parked it three inches from the guy's driver's side and put my hazard on. Then called the police and waited. I knew the person wouldn't be able to move his car at all because his passenger side door was being blocked by a tree. We waited about 45 minutes for the police to show up. They asked me if I called the police island and I replied yes. They asked me why I was parked so close and I explained the above. The cops burst out laughing and asked me to move up a bit so they could give the information. Ten minutes later, they came back to my car and said I was free to go. And a tow truck will be there in 20 minutes. Slow day apparently. Apparently, this guy's plates didn't match the vehicle. And the plates were expired. So that's three tickets and a tow. I pulled into the garage and smirked as I cooked tacos watching his SUV get pulled away. Best tacos ever. I work as pest control. It's a pretty fun job. I get to meet lots of people every day and I see a variety of entitled people. People glad to see me and sometimes people jumping with happiness that the wasp man has finally arrived. Yep, that's my favorite nickname. So you'll be just as surprised as I was that this story isn't about that. I had just completed the good day's work. Two red jobs, two bib bunks jobs and four wasp jobs. When I realize it's only two in a day when I get off at half past four, I head to the office and think about all the fun sales slash paperwork stuff I can do to ease out this month's paycheck. We usually get like 5-10% to 10 commission on all jobs we do that's over $400. I park my car and start reaching for my pockets to lock the car. When suddenly, I hear a child yelling, I want that one. I look over to see a kid running over with her caring looking mom right behind her. The mom keeps her distance but the kid is really interested in the car. It's a brand new Volkswagen Caddy Maxi so I understand her fully. I go up to the kid and start talking to her about the car. In Sweden, we don't have that norm that it's only pedos talking to small kids. So it's socially acceptable. And I start talking to her about what I do for a living. Giving her the same speech I give all the curious kids. 
She of course doesn't pay any attention to me and manages to open the passenger door. I carefully close the door again so I don't get her fingers in between by accident and tell her that's not okay. Until I feel a hand on my shoulder. It is a mother. The Karen. How dare you not let my kid get in the car? You're done with it and now it's our turn to use it. I looked stunned by what Karen had just said. Until I remember that our office's neighbors was a car rental company. Oh no ma'am. As you can see this car has my company's logo on it. We are neighbors of the car rent. I said before I was abruptly interrupted. This is outrageous. I demand to talk to your boss. You can't just refuse a customer. She says snarky. Getting so close to me I can smell the free coffee the rental place offers. Listen. I say as calmly as possible. Trying to not fold this woman's clothes while she's still in them. This is property of company with an X in their logo. Not specific car rental place, as you can see if you compare the logo by the door you just walked out of and the logo on my car and the logo on my clothes. Without even double checking, she frowns and says, You're lying. I demand you get your manager. Fed up at this point, I say, Okay. And I go in and grab the boss of the rental place. We'd have lunch several times before. And I have even sold him some stuff off the clock. When we get out, I see the entitled mom is in my driver's seat and the little kid is trying to jump in the passenger seat. I reach for my pocket. That's when I realize that the keys, that's for a brand new van containing more poison in it than is needed to kill an entire football stadium is in the bloody van. I run up to the car and lucky for me, the stupid cow doesn't know that on newer cars you don't need to put the key in ignition. And she tries to search around the car where to put the keys in. I forcefully drag her out of the car when she does the typical drama thing and go entirely limp. Not make it seem like I'm using way too much force and is hurting her. As soon as I get her out, she starts crying on the ground, yelling that I broke her arm. The boss of the rental place comes around to our side and starts shouting at the Karen, telling her, and this is why you were kicked out of our store. You can't just steal people's cars. Suddenly, she amazingly jolted back to her normal self and exclaimed, I'm calling the police, telling them you two just beat me up and touched my little girl, pedos. We just laughed and pointed at a camera pointing squarely at that piece of parking lot. Defeated, she stood up, grabbed her kid and muttered away. All while the little kid was crying that she didn't get to go in my car. Ah, lovely day. This is an old story, but something recently happened that brought it back up. I'll be listing the main characters with the age they were at the time. There is me, 19, Pritt, female, 24, Ash, 25, and Duncan, male, 20. Duncan doesn't come in until later, but I moved in with Pritt and Ash in a roommate situation around June of 2021. We were good friends and I needed to get myself and my baby, female, 1, out of a bad situation. The split for rent and utilities was cheap enough. We all agreed to pitch in for food and drinks. We all had our own jobs to do on certain days. We basically treated it like our own little family. Brett had given me a bad feeling when I first met her. She was clingy, easy to anger and threatened violence when she was upset. But I knew she had BPD and didn't see signs that she'd actually hurt someone. When I moved in, I learned I was wrong. Britt and Ash would bicker in almost every conversation and had screaming matches at least twice a week. Britt got physically violent and I always ended up comforting and cleaning up Ash in the end. It was stressful on me and the baby. I barely slept and it missed with my milk production. Overall, just not a good situation to start with. I was using foot stamps when I moved in. I only got enough to use for one adult and one infant slash toddler. At first, stop by a good bit of food, whatever the baby needed, and then some snacks for everyone. While we all bought food separately, we were all allowed to use it. I was the one who cooked. We always ate dinner together. Pritz would clean, Ash would leave for work. Eventually, Pritz stopped cleaning, so it fell on me. She was just too overwhelmed to do the dishes. Then they started asking for my food stamps card for gas station runs. 
and flat out took it from my wallet without asking. Sometimes they would hoard whatever they bought with it in their bedroom. All the while Prick got more aggressive with me, refused to let me join in conversation in the living room and started saddling me with even more of the housework. Brett started to mess with my things shortly after Duncan moved in. He was nice, kind of reserved, but I enjoyed hanging out with him. He put in the effort to include me in things. Brett didn't like that and got passive aggressive with it. If I left a soda can on the counter while I changed the baby, she poured it out immediately. If I left my laptop open in the kitchen, she'd take it and literally throw it onto my bed. One day, I came home to all of my expensive pumping equipment and lactation supplements dumped onto my floor. And what did she say about that one? It's gross, the guests have to see that stuff. When my food stamps card declined only a week after recharge, I decided I needed to move out. I still had my old apartment and was still paying for it. It would take a week or two, but I planned to move back there. Starting packing my stuff and making sure it was ready to go. Brent was pissed at me, refused to talk to me and apparently told Ash, six days in, that I said they can touch or talk to my baby. I never said that, I'm not that much of a jerk. Ash asked me about it and I told her the truth and we decided to keep it civil and stay friends. We sat with each other sharing funny TikTok videos until a text popped up on the screen from Brett. It said, thanks a lot Ash, now the witch will try and stay. That was it. I was moving, now. I called my mother, a few friends, and decided I would take everything paid for with my money. I took both of my TVs, most of the cookware and cutlery, the coffee table and end table, the outside chairs, all the organizers in the bathroom, not to mention the plunger. I almost cleared the fridge and cabinets of food and took it all with me. My bedroom was bare. So was the living room since I bought most of the decor. Half the blankets in the house were mine. I'm very tiny and get cold easily. I had already paid for the months but didn't ask for the last half back. They would probably already blow it on weed. Nothing against it. I smoked too. They were just too constantly high. I just left. All my stuff packed into multiple vehicles and down the road. I didn't hear anything from them besides a string of crude texts saying that they would call CPS and lie to them if I didn't pay for another month. They were going to get kicked out. It never happened that I know of. What brought this back to my mind was a few weeks ago when Duncan messaged me on Facebook. He asked how I was doing and I asked the same. Then he told me he moved away from the roommate. He said he understood why I left now. That the fighting got worse and the house was in shambles. They never cleaned and Duncan couldn't do it all himself. And the mess kept him from moving his toddler in with him. Prick got jealous of him being friends with Ash and started lashing out. He couldn't take it anymore and dipped the same way I did. From what I know, Ash lost her job and Brit works at the piercing shop. They are living off of Ash's rich father. The relationship is at a breaking point. Can't say I feel sorry for them. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.